The problem with being a homeowner is that if it's not one thing, it's another. And I was out here the other day trying to finish up the roof of this catio enclosure. It started raining and so I was doing a mad dash trying to get all of my tools into the house as quickly as possible, as you do. And then I spotted something with this downpipe here. Now, I don't think it's a blockage within the downpipe itself for two reasons. Firstly, I always put these gutter guards in the top of the downpipes because we've got loads of oak trees around here that shed all of their leaves this time of year. And I don't want all of that dirt and debris going down my downpipe. And secondly, we only had all of our guttering and downpipes replaced about a year and a half ago. So that means it's likely to be a problem below ground level. So I've got hold of one of these things. This is called an endoscope and it's basically a camera with an LED light on a long length of cable with this thing which has a screen on it and hopefully I can find out what the issue is using this. So I was expecting to see a pipe down here but I can't see a pipe. This is not good. So something's definitely not right there, but before I go to the effort of taking up the slabs, I do have another downpipe over here, which presumably goes to the same soaker way. So I think I might take this downpipe off the wall and just see if I can identify where the pipe leads to. Hopefully it's not the soaker way itself that's blocked because that would create a huge issue. I would need to presumably take up all of the paving slabs, dig it all out and replace it with a new one. And we actually had similar work done a couple of years ago at the other side of our bungalow because drainage was an issue there too. So we had the whole drive dug up and we put in some of the plastic crates and that's been working great, but it does make me wonder, could an alternative option be just to till all of my gutters the other way so that all of the water is directed to the front of the house so just to interject here, there's a really good website, which I'll leave a link to in the description box, showing how to calculate both your roof area and the size of soakaway needed to deal with that amount of water. I did the maths and unfortunately for us, sending more water to the soakaway at the front of the house was not a good option. All right, so in this one, we do have a pipe, which is a good sign. So that pipe goes that way. Let's see what we can find down here. This pipe was nice and clean, no signs of any issues. I couldn't quite maneuver the camera far enough to figure out where the soak away was though. Before I reinstall the guttering, I'm just going to rinse it to remove any dirt or grit that might stop the rubber gaskets from sealing properly. Right, I've put all of that back together again because I've realized I'm kind of delaying the inevitable. I really need to get under the floor. If I can avoid deconstructing the cat enclosure, I will. So at this point I kept digging and digging and digging with my hand and there was no sign of a pipe. And just as I was beginning to lose hope, I don't believe it, I found a pipe. It's way below where it should be. It is eight and a half inches or 220 millimeters below the surface of the slab and it is absolutely rammed full of dirt. So I thought I should interject again here. I mentioned earlier in the video that only a couple of years ago we had all of our guttering and fascia boards replaced. And I can only assume that because there was an eight inch gap between the downpipe and the pipe in the ground, that the tradesman who fitted that downpipe must have been aware of the issue and didn't think to tell us. Which is absolutely crazy to me, but unfortunately I could write a long list of similarly bad and disappointing experiences that I've had hiring people in to do things over the years. I've had some great experiences with tradesmen too, but unfortunately the bad experiences far outweigh the good, which is why I tend to try and fix problems myself now, because at least then I know that if things go wrong, I only have myself to blame and at least I'll learn something from the experience. Anyway, aside from being really annoyed with the tradesman that fitted that downpipe, I'm also really annoyed at myself. Why? Because when I was working on tidying up this patio only six months ago, I lifted the slabs around the pipe at that time and I didn't think to check that the pipe was leading to a pipe in the ground. And reviewing the footage from that video, it looked like I was suspicious about it at the time because I can see myself fiddling around with it. So yeah, that's annoying. But anyway, back to the footage. Looks like charcoal. It is charcoal. Big bit of clay pipe. So now I can get my hand just around the corner, but I think that's about the extent of what I can get out with my hand. 
I really need something hook shaped so that I can get around the bend. So hopefully now you can see that the pipe goes down and then there's a bend, but I just couldn't clear any debris from it because this square pipe is only 70 millimeters diameter and my hand didn't fit in. I've been prodding it with this piece of wire to loosen it up, shaped it a bit like a hook and gone around the corner with it. Um, but that's about as much as I can get out. So I'm gonna move on to pressure washing and see if I can shift what's left using this. Right, I'm going to admit defeat. It is now draining, but very slowly it's kind of glug, glug, glugging its way down. I don't have the right kind of attachment for my pressure washer to get it in around the bend. So I'm going to call some professionals and see when they can get out to me. In the meantime, I've rigged up this downpipe with all of the parts available to me to get it running as far away from the house as possible. The paving slabs are sloped in that direction. So the water in theory should run away and drain into the stones and I'm gonna temporarily cover up this area just to stop any more debris getting down there. A couple of days later, the drainage man came over to try and clear the blockage. He had warned me over the phone that it was 50-50 whether he'd be able to clear it or not. And he managed to clear a lot of stuff, mostly lots of sand for some reason, and also some roots, which could mean that the pipe is broken somewhere, who knows. It wasn't a totally wasted visit though because he was able to help us identify where the soakaway is. Using another pipe in the ground over here, which to be honest I'd forgotten all about, it used to take the water from the guttering that was on a lean-to which we demolished just over a year ago. That was another video on my channel. So anyway, back then I just put a cap on it and forgot all about it because it was no longer needed. We could figure out where the soakaway was because you could hear the camera hitting against it underground and obviously you could see the soakaway on the screen too. I didn't get any footage of that but it's not much to look at anyway. The soakaway itself is just a big hole filled with building rubble and it's not going to last forever because the old rubble soakaways eventually need replacing. I think the lifespan of them is about 25 years and ours has probably done well over that already. And it's likely that all three of our downpipes at the back of the house all lead to that soakaway. But obviously one of them is now knackered. I want to thank Tradeify for sponsoring this video. Tradeify is an all-in-one job management application for mobile and desktop designed especially for busy tradespeople. It helps you to deal with incoming inquiries, raise quotes, issue and track invoices, timesheets, appointments, reporting, and loads more, freeing up your time so that you can do the stuff that you want to be doing, like, I don't know, not messing about with guttering. For a free 14-day trial, use the link in the description box below. And if you'd also like to get 50% off Tradeify for three months, once the trial expires, you can use the promo code RAGANBONE when you sign up. So I needed to find a solution and the best option to me seemed to be to remove this downpipe and instead of this gutter tilting down to the left, to instead tilt it down to the right and install the downpipe in the corner here instead. And then I could run a pipe down under this gravel here to join up to the existing pipe, which we know is clean and still works okay. The only concern I had is that because the square pipe I'd be hooking it up to is so small at only 70 millimeters in diameter, I was worried that that area could become a bit of a bottleneck because I'd be increasing the volume of water going down that pipe by a considerable amount. If the pipe underground was one of the big 110 millimeter pipes, like the ones we had installed last year at the front of the house, then it wouldn't have been an issue. I kind of came to the conclusion though that it was really the only option we had aside from digging up the patio and putting in all new pipes and a new soak away, which at this time we simply don't have the money to do. So we needed a temporary solution, one that would be at least an improvement in terms of getting the water to run into the soak away rather than draining away into the ground right next to our bungalow, which in the longer term is likely to cause problems with the mortar lines between the bricks below damp proof course. And all that excess moisture in the ground could potentially cause structural issues with the bungalow too. So I started digging to make way for a new pipe and this ultimately turned out to be a complete waste of time because I found that the existing pipe I'd need to hook it up to wasn't deep enough in the ground and I couldn't find any downpipe fittings that would allow me to tee into it below ground level that would avoid water potentially seeping out of the fittings and into the ground. Oh and don't ask me what these holes in the pipe were there for either because I have no idea but they definitely shouldn't be there and I'll need to plug them later. In the end, this is the solution that I came up with. I bought one of these branch connectors, which I will fit to the bottom of the good down pipe. I like to use masking tape wrapped around the pipe just to help me cut in a straight line. 
Now this ended up being too loose a fit into the square pipe so I ended up cutting another piece of the round pipe to use as a kind of collar inside the square pipe that I could push the branch connector into. And then I cut a new piece of pipe which I can run to the new down pipe location and yes, I know what you're thinking, this is going to look awful running along the wall and I totally agree but like I said earlier, I can't see a better option here and this is going to be an improvement, not aesthetically but functionally over having a blocked pipe causing future issues. If you think you have a better temporary solution than what I've come up with here then please do let me know in the comments because I'd love to hear it. To block the holes in the pipe I'm just going to apply some silicon and then I have this piece of plastic that I cut from an old chopping board to sit on top to stop any more dirt getting down there. And while I'm at it I'm also going to seal up the gaps between the round pipe and the square. Right, skipping ahead quite a bit because it was raining and I was miserable as you can probably tell. But as you'll see the new downpipe is fitted. The gutter has been tilted so that water drains into it. I've tested it with a watering can and the water seems to be running to it just fine. The real test I think is going to be keeping an eye on this, particularly where the new pipe meets the old in the ground when there's a really heavy downpour of rain. So I'm going to leave it all exposed for now just so that I can keep an eye on it. So I waited for some heavy rainfall and went out and had a look and I'm pleased to say it all seems to be draining away just fine. As a temporary solution it should do the job for now but obviously we don't want to leave it like that forever because the pipe looks awful. I also still need to add a couple more gutter clips up there too but I ran out of those so that'll be a job for another day. And then I could do a few final finishing touches. I filled the old void with some leftover building sand and then a four to one mix of mortar. Please do let me know in the comments what you would have done differently and thank you for watching.